A2IM, the collective voice of independent music. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another uh, A2IM webinar. My name is Evan Plake. I'm the membership manager here at A2IM, and we've got a great one planned today in conjunction with Sound Exchange, as well as with some representatives from uh, Concord and Cobalt Music Publishing to discuss Sound Exchange's uh, Music Data Exchange or MDX application and discuss uh, sort of specifically to link uh, musical works with sound recordings, as well as just generally how uh, MDX helps make labeled lives a lot easier through streamlining the uh, licensing process and cleaning up publishing data. So uh, before I hand it over, um, if you are viewing and not a member of A2IM, but interested in learning more or uh, getting involved, uh, you can message uh, email um, membership at A2IM.org, which I will put in the chat to get in touch with uh, myself and the rest of the membership team and uh, we'll get you taken care of. So with that, I'm now going to hand it over to Sound Exchange's uh, Business Process Management Analyst, uh, Jake Herzog, to uh, take it away. So Jake, um, take it over. All right, thank you for that. Yes, uh, so I'm Jake Herzog. I do work at Sound Exchange, and I also work on the support team for Music Data Exchange, MDX as we like to call it. Um, so let me start this presentation with a couple slides and then we're going to dive into a demo of MDX uh, before uh, turning it over to our panel and then we'll have a Q&A session. All right. Okay, so um, before diving into MDX uh, and giving the demo, I think it's important to uh, discuss the uh, licensing backdrop, um, what things, how things are going today, um, how things are working today and for mechanical licensing, sync and performing rights. So uh, for users of recordings such as labels or DSPs or other licensees, uh, they need to know who to pay uh, for the compositions that are used on their recordings. Uh, so what needs to happen there is a conversation. Um, what does that conversation typically look like? Uh, you know better than I do. Um, I have an idea, which, which I'll explain. Um, but MDX helps to facilitate that conversation, uh, specifically for mechanical royalties. So uh, this is important to, uh, to say that mechanical royalties are not just for uh, CD pressing, but for first use and first release of the recording. So what was happening today? Again, uh, you're more familiar with this than I am, um, but this conversation all occurred over email. Uh, and this is troublesome because as you know, that most recordings are using compositions where there's an average of eight writers on the work. Uh, that means that there could be eight publishers and so you couple that, um, multiply that by 15 for an album, and you've got a ton of emails that are going out. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's not a transparent or efficient way of getting those splits or resolving any conflicts that may occur. Uh, so it gets pretty hairy pretty quickly. All right, so um, that's where MDX comes into play. So MDX is an application that was designed by Sound Exchange to um, facilitate the exchange of data between labels and publishers. Uh, MDX was uh, uh, created by Sound Exchange in consultation with a best practices working group that was established by the RIAA and the NMPA. And it acts as a hub between the labels and publishers. So it all starts on the label side where they send a request to the hub. The hub will route that request for publishing data to the appropriate publisher. Publishers respond, those shares are captured in the hub and then sent back to the label. So all parties that have an interest on a particular work can see the status of the split declarations going back and forth. Any conflict is surfaced right in the applications, though it makes resolutions uh, easy uh, and transparent. So again, it's a hub. It's one centralized location. It's all web based. And uh, it is designed for uh, automated data feeds and bulk tools. So no matter what the volume of releases your label has, uh, we have designed it with you in mind. 
So for larger, larger labels, uh, we've implemented DDEX automation. Uh, for smaller labels, you could even use Excel uploads, and I'll show you all of that shortly. Uh, again, it starts on a label sign, so we say it's a call and response choreography. That means the label sends a request, and then publishers responds, goes back to the label with the accurate information. And, and here is where the link between the recording and the composition occur. All right, so let's just dive in, shall we? So hold on one second. All right, so here we go. Uh, we are logged into MDX. Uh, this is a test environment. So the data that you see in here is staged. I am logged in as a label uh, BMG. Uh, the first thing that you're gonna notice um, here is just the dashboard. Uh, so here we have uh, a search area up top. Uh, what you're searching for as a label, you're searching for requests. So you're searching MDX for requests that have been sent to MDX. Uh, if you wanted to do some search on uh, works, so we do have a searchable works database. If you want to search for works, uh, you would go up to search and drop down to all works. Uh, there you can search um, any songs that MDX has seen, whether it's through CWR or MDF, MDX established links. Here we have split issues. This again is where we surface any sort of split conflict, whether it's an overclaim or an underclaim. So uh, again, uh, sound exchange does not get involved with any conflicts, but this is all resolved between the label and the publisher. Uh, again, making all of the data that you see here, uh, not in this test environment, but in production, it's all authoritative. It's been provided by the labels and publishers. Uh, folders. Folders is an area that is, uh, it's company defined, so you can create as many folders as you'd like uh, and use them as a, uh, a workflow uh, management tool. And you can drop request in simply there. Um, so as a label, uh, my purpose in MDX is to submit requests. Um, as I mentioned, there's several ways of doing that. Uh, if you are a DDEX user, you could submit those requests directly from your internal system uh, to MDX without even logging into the UI. Uh, there, MDX will uh, forward those requests to publishers appropriately, and they will respond. Those responses go right back into your internal system. If you are using MDX uh, not as a DDEX user, um, you would simply upload your request through Excel so up here at uploads, drop down to Excel request, you would download a template, and then you would go ahead and upload that template after completing it. And I can show you what one of those looks like here. All right, so this would be the way that I would submit requests if I'm not using DDEX. Uh, so if you are familiar with other sound exchange templates, uh, this will look familiar to you um, because it was created by the same people who created those other templates. Uh, so what we're asking for here is uh, pretty standard information about the recording, such as the recording artist, the recording title, ISRC, of course. Um, is this audio or video? Um, all of this information pertains to the 
uh, recording that has the composition that you would like the link to. Um, so you put in the release name, uh, is it an album, single, EP, ringtone, uh, and of course the release date. Am I requesting uh, mechanical rights? Uh, yes, so that would be MR. Is it? Uh, we also allow for sync rights to be requested as well. So mechanical and sync, you would indicate that with the MR, SR. Um, and then over here, simply work data. So the work title, a local work ID, and we do require one writer and one targeted publisher for every request. And again, that's because this is a call and response system. So in your request, you must target at least one publisher. But again, um, you know as well as I do that you would want to provide as much information as possible to ensure that you get 100% uh, of the shares back. Uh, so once you provide that information, um, you would upload it back into MDX and then it would route your request accordingly. Um, there's also an instructions tab here that just further defines each column and what we're looking for. Uh, and then here we have on the third tab a list of all of the registered publishers. Uh, because this is a test environment, it's probably only going to list about two dozen. Um, but in production, there are over 500 publishers that are registered. So I've completed my uh, template, and then I'm going to go back into MDX and upload it. Let's see. So I would upload that template here, and I did that uh, just a short while ago so that I could show you um, what um, that looks like. So again, I'm registered or logged in as BMG. I've submitted those requests. I'm going to drop down to my submitted request so that I can check on just the requests that I've submitted, not all of the requests across the app. I've got some filters on the left here to narrow my search results. Uh, and then here are the requests that I've submitted. I can sort by last updated. I can see that I got a response today. Um, so if I go ahead and open this up, I will see all of the re recording metadata here. I can see that I submitted this. I was requesting mechanical rights and sync rights. Got the work title. And then now I can see, let's see, uh, Cobalt has responded. Uh, they said they collect 33.33%. They said, come to me directly for that license. And they are collecting that 33% on behalf of Gus Publishing Company for Jericho's share. Got the IPI for the writer, IPI for the owning publisher. Uh, looks like Sony ATD also responded with a 40% collection share on behalf of two writers. And I see there's a pending claim on this writer here. That just means that they'll be getting back to me with uh, an updated collection share soon. So we break these out by mechanical and sync. And so we've established a link between this recording and this work. If I have any questions about the shares that I've received from these two publishers, I can go down to the audit history and simply contact the publishers here. So I see that Cobalt's responded. Um, if I have a question, I can go ahead, uh, copy a link to this particular request, and then I could email the person here about what I see here. Um, so that audit history actually comes into uh, a uh, great play when we're looking at split issues. If there was a split conflict uh, that needs to be resolved or you have a question about an overclaim, uh, again, that audit history does uh, come into play there. And if I want to see the recordings that are linked to these requests, I can show recordings here. I see the ISRCs. Great. Uh, so earlier I had mentioned that when you're searching here, you are searching for a request in a database. Um, if you wanted to search for compositions, 
go up to search, all works, and then we have a searchable works database here. Uh, this searchable works database is comprised of two different types of works. Um, most of these are provided to us by publishers who are submitting CWRs. So it looks like we have 4.5 million works in this database in this test environment. Um, this is a great research tool. If you need to find out which writers should be on that request, you could do some sleuthing here by searching for the work title or the recording title to see if it's in the database. Um, and then the other source of works is a MDX work. Um, what that is is simply, it's a snapshot of a conversation that occurs between, um, between a label and a publisher when a request has been responded to. Now, if you would like a, uh, a, a deeper dive into MDX or to look at any specific features, please uh, email us at info at musicdataexchange.com and someone from our support team can help you, uh, can help schedule a demo with you. We do give demos every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so let us know if you'd like to participate or if you have any questions that are not answered in this webinar. All right, so what are we looking at today? Um, so we have over 300 labels registered uh, with MDX. We have over 500 publishers that are registered and we are, we're always registering new publishers and labels. Uh, each week we probably add another five. Um, we receive on average about 500 recordings every week and then couple that with 350 or so uh, publisher claims to those recordings. And that's every week. Uh, and again, we launched in 2018. So uh, what's coming down the road? Well, uh, we would like to get more labels uh, active and registered in, in MDX and also more publishers. Expanding on the publisher reach for for the labels is critical. And as I mentioned, the data in MDX is authoritative uh, and as uh, diligent and faithful custodians of your data, it is important that we keep it accurate. So the next major release for MDX is the ability to process LODs in MDX. Uh, this is uh, extremely important to keeping the information accurate. Um, so what this means is that when a publisher acquires a new catalog, uh, they can simply go into MDX and update all of the shares accordingly, uh, which in turn notifies all of the labels um, that have a stake in that acquisition. Um, they'll know immediately who the new publisher to pay and to get that license for, who, who that is. Um, also CWR implementation. So right now, as I mentioned, we do accept CWRs from publishers. That's more publishing data in the database. Um, but also we would like to um, uh, integrate those CWRs to help uh, facilitate that conversation, make it a little faster. So if a publisher has provided their shares in a CWR, we'd like to make it easier for them to just pull the shares from that information, from that uh, CWR and uh, send that back to the label immediately. So uh, there's quite a few benefits to MDX. Um, here is just a few of them. Uh, one, it's a centralized hub. So it's a repository for recording and publishing shares. Um, the link is established before the release hits the market. Um, and as we know, having that link between the recording and composition is just critical for uh, licensing and payment. Also, uh, we do surface any conflicts and that was in the split issues area of the app. Uh, so when a publisher or publishers resolve any sort of issue, um, the label has access to the uh, resolution immediately. Again, it's authoritative data. All of the data that you see in MTX was provided by the sound recording owners and the 
of publishing copyright owners. Also, the sound recording and publishing copyright owners link the recording to the work themselves. All of that happens right in MDX uh, through the conversation of the uh, request and the response. Uh, it's automated and it's easy. Um, so I did mention that uh, it does integrate with local copyright systems. If you're a DDEX user, um, we are working towards CWR integration. And also we do allow for bulk uploads using spreadsheets, which I showed you. Um, customer sort, uh, support, uh, we've got a team here to walk you through uh, submitting your first upload. So if you are a label and you're, you're just getting started in MDX, let us know. Again, info at musicdataexchange.com. Um, someone on our team will help you with your uploads. Uh, and the onboarding process is pretty simple. Um, so we will touch on that shortly. Uh, again, it's timely. So all of this happens before the release hits the market um, with real-time updating. So registration is simple. If you go to musicdataexchange.com, uh, click uh, need account, and there's a simple form there. Uh, we'll get back to you in less than a day um, and get you registered within a week. All right, thank you. Okay, so I wanna turn it over to the panel here. So we've got Torben McCarter from Concord Music Publishing, Sarah Jackson also from Cobalt, and Jessica buckholtz Brom, uh, also from Cobalt. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we've got a couple questions here for you and um, so bear with me. Okay. So as a publisher, uh, can you tell me why it is important for labels to receive this data? Uh, with uh, Cobalt? Yeah, yeah. Um, can you hear me? I'm okay. <laughs> um, it's really important for us to get these ISRCs and all of the product information in as soon as possible. Um, collecting that data helps us then make that connection in our own system so that we're able to get benefit in other areas as well, um, especially with the ISRC that helps definitely down the line with um, DSPs and other sorts of um, areas that will need to that in order to get paid properly. So all of that information, having that up front and in an area that is easily accessible and, um, and keeps it all together in one spot is great for us because it helps us organize our workflow as well around getting that information. So, um, and having the visibility of the, the splits that we've delivered along with other publishers splits delivery so we can track conflicts and things like that in a hub atmosphere actually we find helps us resolve things a lot faster and we have a quicker turnaround on getting things cleared instead of having things over multiple channels and emails which gets confused with several different people working on it. So um, yeah, that's pretty important for us. Excellent, excellent. All right, uh, so can you tell me how your company has benefited from using MDX, uh, Torben? So how has it been over at Concord? Yeah, no problem. So um, I'm kind of, I uh, work in tandem with another person on my team um, responding to split requests in MDX. Um, and it's extremely helpful for us because um, it's a great place um, to not only get in all the requests that we get from labels, but your brand new releases typically hit MDX first. Um, so a lot of these brand new releases uh, may be charting, uh, maybe they're doing extremely well. Um, so we wanna be on top of those requests and make sure that we get in um, our publishing info to the label as soon as possible. Um, and kind of like Sarah mentioned, um, it's a really nice kind of, um, I guess dashboard environment where you can know that all these requests exist. You can even, um, if you're not ready to confirm a share yet, you can um, mark it as pending. Um, so at least the label will know that you're working on it. Um, you know, and that over email is, is kind of a longer conversation. So it's kind of nice just to be able to come in and say, hey, you know, Concord is working on the splits. I'm reaching out to A&R. You kind of get all that compressed um, in with literally just one click of a button. Um, so 
kind of in this panel, I really wanted to harp on the efficiency and kind of the simplicity um, that we really rely on at, at Concord through through MDX. So it's um, again just those top releases are come in lightning fast from the labels because I know that they'd like to get them confirmed as soon as possible um, so they can start paying out and kind of on the opposite side of the, the table uh, for us, it's an extremely efficient and quick way to get things confirmed. So. Awesome. Awesome. And, and for Cobalt, um, could you speak on getting that ISRC data and access to recordings, the automation or timelines? Yeah, um, I think that, you know, typically in the email world, sometimes a split confirmation would come in and uh, it may or may not have the ISRC and the timing at that point. Sometimes it's the focus is the claim, which is wonderful, but um, it's great to have that upfront, that ISRC coming in significantly earlier than the license request or an advice letter notification or uh, anything where we previously would have to wait until the song maybe was 100% cleared, we're getting the ISRC up front that gets into our system sooner. Uh, it gets pushed out with our registrations earlier. Everything becomes more efficient. Um, we also have found that there's no doubling up on any works where any work where uh, it's very clear to see in the hub if somebody on your team has even worked on it. So it's great to see other publishers and their their uh, work in that on that same composition, but it's great to even be able to see at a glance if somebody's already queried it internally uh, and not double up on anything. So efficient, efficiencies all around, uh, you know, between publishers, but also internally for, for MDX, for sure. Fantastic. All right, uh, so can, can anybody speak on the onboarding process? Uh, what was it like for, for your teams? Um, I can jump on that. If sure. Um, so I started using MDX um, a couple years ago, actually, on the label side. Um, I was at Warner Music Group when it was kind of rolled out. Um, so I kind of got to see the early stages of MDX from the label side, which is really nice. But I actually just learned um, MDX on the publishing side about a year ago. Um, so I was kind of introduced to it um, by our team. Um, and it really wasn't um, that tricky to get started on just because of how, again, how simple it is. Um, so I was taught it by members of my team that were kind of already using it um, and confirming splits that way. And then I um, was actually lucky enough to have Jake um, come to Nashville and we talked with him and kind of talked about some questions I had because I was just kind of um, fully taking over MDX uh, for Concord at that point in time. So. Um, Jake has even been a tremendous help. Um, any questions I have, he responds within minutes uh, if I shoot him an email on something. So um, onboarding was, was pretty painless and um, pretty easy to uh, get a handle on how it all, how it all worked. Yeah. Thanks, Torben. Uh, you're setting the bar really high now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. All right. Um, so. I know that, uh, that, that your companies are getting different uh, types of requests. Um, looking, looking at like uh, new releases, um, could you speak on clearing uh, new products uh, through MDX? Do me to Okay. <laughs> Um, I'll just say one thing that the pending uh, feature for a publisher is a wonderful feature for new releases, especially because perhaps something is new. Uh, we need to confirm our claim, but we do know we have that writer. We have a agreement in place with that writer. It's great to be able to let the labels know, yeah, you're at the right port of call. You're in the right place, but I just need to confirm our number, frankly. So the pending feature on the publishing side is great for new releases. Uh, it lets us get a word out quickly uh, until we know real, real firm information. You know, that, that brings up a really good point. So um, when MDX originally launched in 2018, uh, we didn't have the ability for, for publishers to respond with a pending claim. Um, but this actually speaks on the feedback that we received from publishers and labels. So when, uh, when you're up and running in MDX, if you have any any feedback all of it truly is appreciated because we want this to be successful for for everybody involved 
So that pending feature came through conversations that we have ongoing with labels and publishers. And, uh, and that's how it got there in the system today. So, and, and again, um, when we took a tour through MDX, um, I, I didn't go down any rabbit holes and, and highlight um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the features that are there. So I do encourage um, any viewer of this webinar to join one of our other demos and so that we can do a, a deeper dive. Um, but all of those features are there because of the, the folks that are using MDX. They said, I need a button to do this, or I need the ability to let a label know that uh, this is my writer, but, um, but we're still working it out, or, or the, the claim is forthcoming. So it allows the label to get information quicker, saying, okay, got it. You know, the more information is coming from you. So this is your writer, um, and that allows them to move forward in their process as well. Great, thank you. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add? I'll just say that um, from a user standpoint, it's pretty intuitive and it's very easy to sort of navigate and understand and, um, you know, find what you're looking for in the system. Um, and that along with the automation and the ease of having everything in one spot, but that it it, do, it doesn't, it's not like a complicated way of dealing with what can become a complicated issue, which is split confirmations. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, I just think it, it, that improves on the um, efficiency and turnaround of response as well as having that interface be so clear. Absolutely. And um, just to add to what Sarah was just saying, um, I know every publisher kind of has their own system in-house for tracking releases. I know Concord probably does it a little differently than Cobalt from Sony ATV, from Warner Chapel or you know whoever. Um, but the nice thing about MDX is it's a consistent place, um, regardless of how organized you may be in your own inbox, that's kind of person to person, I suppose. Um, but it's a nice consistent place to know that those requests will always be there. You won't lose them in your email. You won't you know, deal with um, emails bouncing back, kind of just the typical, um, sort of situations that unfortunately sometimes happen and can kind of make this process um, more cumbersome over email. Um, so if anything, it's it's like a kind of like a even like a big whiteboard where you can say, okay, these are my releases that we're keeping an eye on, and it kind of just gives you a really good picture for what's being released. Um, have we let the label know we're working on it? Again, through kind of the simple way of just saying pending, um, and again, just yeah, great way to um, kind of house your your process. Excellent. All right. Uh, so let's take a look. Um, I'm going to pivot now uh, away from the panel. Thank you all for, for joining. Um, and I'm going to answer some of these questions here. So, uh, so hang tight. Let's see. All right. So are the uh, do-it-yourself style publishing administrators Uh, the answer is no, HFA is not a participant in MDX. Um, this is a pre-licensing tool. Um, so again, licensing still occurs outside of MDX. Uh, so publishers do have um, the ability to, uh, uh, to say that their share, uh, you should come to them directly for that license or go directly to H HFA. Uh, let's see. Uh, TuneCore is not currently registered. Um, and we will work on um, getting this demo out, if, if possible, uh, to share afterwards. I do see there's a couple questions about that, um, if we can share the, the webinar after. All right, great. Uh, well, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us directly at info at musicdataexchange.com and someone from our support team will get back to you as soon as possible. All right, thank you.
All right, cool. Again, um, thanks so much, Jake. Thanks, Sarah, Torben, and Jessica as well. Uh, super informative panel. Um, as, as, as Jake said, we'll, uh, we'll work to hopefully um, get a recording up or um, yeah, get, get some kind of um, you know, permanent demo up. Um, again, uh, any non-members, please feel free, free to reach out to membershipa2m.org uh, if interested in getting involved in anything on the, uh, the membership side. And uh, yeah, once again, thanks to everyone for coming out and thanks to uh, the panelists for participating. Have a good day. All right, thank you. Thanks.